Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Curvigato. Oh my goodness, do you hear the birds chirping? I'm sitting out here grounding, getting ready to read more of The Tyranny of Words by Stuart Chase. This has changed my writing levels beyond measure. Oh my goodness. Every author, every speaker, every minister should get this book, The Tyranny of Words by Stuart Chase which I happened to hear from A.W. Tozier as he was doing a message, a sermon, and it just blessed my heart. And oh my goodness, it has absolutely changed my writing levels. So if you are a writer, minister, speaker, get Stuart Chase's The Tyranny of Words. As you join in today, be super hopeful and expectant. God is going to encourage you. I see MJ. So awesome to have you. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And as others of you join in, today is just going to be so beyond amazing. God has just been speaking to me. Y'all, it is amazing how God just confirms things through car tags. I don't know why. All I know is it has been this way for decades with me and God. And so over the last couple of days, God has just been speaking to me about loving myself and the words echoed through my father who just it just came up in my mind over and over and over again for the last couple days it was coming up in my mind as i was just going about my business doing routine either getting coffee ready or something ready in the kitchen and my father's words would just play over and over and over in my head robin i just want you to love yourself and oh my goodness I just cannot tell you how amazing the last couple of days have been as God has just been bringing this home to me. Scripture says we can only love others as we love ourselves. So many times we're projecting onto others the log that's in our eye of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil where we feel bad and we project it on others in order to make ourselves feel better. And we're totally unconscious of it. It's just how it is when you get your identity in certain parts of your soul, the fragmented parts from the world, and you're going to spaces looking for who you are instead of bringing who you are to that space. You know that you might not be accepted in that space. That's okay. We are accepted in the beloved, amen, and that's all that matters. Ephesians 1, as you look at verses 1 through 11, we are accepted in Christ, amen. And so God wants me to strengthen you and encourage you about loving yourself. So yesterday, as I picked Rich up from work and we were coming home, there was the personalized tag on 6th Avenue South in downtown Birmingham that said one L-U-V me. And all I could see was I love me. And the Holy Spirit was just strengthening me saying, Robin, you're loving yourself more and more each day with the love of Christ. And so I'm gonna to get to that point today as we hear just a special message that is gonna cause you to abound in truth and faith. It's going to refresh your soul. It's gonna get your eyes off things of the world, off of the voice of the accuser that would condemn you, Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And so listen to these birds chirping. Can you hear those birds chirping? If you can hear those birds chirping, let me know, because I'm going to use that as an analogy of loving ourselves, and I'm going to just bring that component in to bring something so home to you that you are probably unconscious of, and today God is just going to do heart surgery and go to that part of your heart, and He's going to operate looking at your intent and motives. And he's going to bring healing, mercy, and grace. Amen. And so probably about two months ago, the Holy Spirit just kept speaking to me about the birds chirping. And every morning when I would wake up, I could hear the birds chirping. And the Lord started speaking to me and he said, Robin, let me tell you this. Not everyone can hear the birds chirping. And I said, God, what do you mean? He said, Robin, when people are so stressed out, with the things of the world, when their eyes are set on circumstances and on lack and on how insufficient they are, they literally cannot hear 
birds chirping and their ears are closed to that sound in which the birds praise him. Saints, think about how the birds praise God. Think about how Jesus talks about in Matthew 6 and in the gospel, how Jesus talks about that God takes care of the birds. They don't have a storehouse. God takes care of each and every one of their needs every day. And so the birds have nothing to do but to praise God. And so now let's bring it to us in relation to things that distract, things that take our focus off of God and His goodness. Because when we look at the goodness of God and His provision and rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice, Philippians 4, which I did the other day in a video, saints, we're just like the birds. We are chirping. We are rejoicing at what God is providing in the moment. And we are able to embrace ourselves fully and love ourselves fully. There's the sirens. I live by both the fire station and I live in the hospital district right by UAB. University of Alabama Birmingham Hospital down here. And so I want to bring in this component because I think that someone here is just gonna get set free. You're gonna get blessed. And I wanna bring in my own personal circumstances and even how I coach some of my individual clients in different spaces of life, different seasons, and embracing the season. And like I said a year ago, which I brought in from the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease in relation to PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. We all have some form of it. It might be a milder version or it might be more amplified. You don't realize that the curse on this earth is trauma, fear, dread. That is the curse, but Jesus came to redeem us of the curse and First John 4, 18 says, Perfect love drives out all fear, thought, and dread of punishment. And so it is that liquid love, literally, that is consumed in your members as that perfect love cast it out. And I've had this happen to me. Some of y'all have heard my testimony. It bears repeating, and then I'm gonna bring in the analogy of my present season. And so 2005, it was amazing. I was just leaving the house Rich and I had just done a Bible study. I was only around the block, not even 200 feet, not even 100 feet, okay? Only around the block going to the YMCA to work out. And all of a sudden, I felt my body caving in on me. And I felt like I was going to die. I cannot explain it other way. There's not words that can articulate exactly how I felt. And I just felt my whole body caving in. It's the only way I can think about it. Kind of like how a building, when they bomb it and it blows up like a condemned building, how it falls down. That's kind of how it felt. And I was unable to move my hands and my hands got palsied. And I, was, I pulled over, I was scared. And I was trying to open my flip phone at the time in 2005 to call Rich to say, Rich, I think I'm dying. I don't know what's happening to me. And my hands, both of my hands were palsied and I couldn't open them. And I was just afraid. And then all of a sudden, and my hand right here was like, kind of like this. And I was trying to get it to open my phone. My body was caving in. All of a sudden, like 10 miles an hour, something like that, this glob comes up from my belly up through my esophagus and it just comes in the palm of my hand and it's the size of the palm of my hand and it looks like this mucus glob jellyfish. I kid you not. Now I have a gag reflex. I don't think like anyone on here, okay? I could not wipe my own son's noses when they were little. I had to get rich to wipe them because I would gag anything coming out of the nose. I remember it years later and I still gag. I literally have a gag reflex. And so when that thing landed in my hand, 
and it was literally the size of the palm of my hand, like a small baseball is all I can describe. And it just came with force up out of me and out of my mouth and landed in my hand. And I opened my car door, the strength came back and I just flung that thing off of my hand. And I was like, what was that? And all of a sudden this power from on high entered my entire body. And I felt like I could run a marathon. I felt like I was running on air, lifted up, high in the sky. And bread, ero, give us this day our daily bread, is the Greek word ero, that it comes from, it means to lift up. And so when you get set free, when you get delivered, you feel like you can run a New York marathon is the only way I can describe it. And you feel just lifted up. That's literally what happens in your members because that thing has been cast off of you or out of you, amen. And so God said, Robin, that was fear. He said, 1 John 4, 18, my perfect love drives fear out of you. He said that fear was an unclean spirit in your belly that had oppressed you. And I think about it affecting my hearing and my seeing. In other words, the reality I lived in. And all of a sudden, I could hear the birds again. I could see color like nobody's business. It was amplified. Color was amplified. My senses were heightened. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. And so I had this love of bounding towards myself in great measure because, you know what? God drove that unclean spirit out. Amen. Well, you know, as you go through life and things happen in life, it can affect you. It can affect you, but God always use it to your benefit. It works. He works it to your good, Romans 8, 28. And so in the past year or so, as I have been in this stage of my hormones, being in balance like crazy, getting to that space, that good space where my hormones are balanced, amen in Jesus' name, which is why another reason why I'm out here grounding. Just FYI, women, if you are going through hormonal imbalance, and men, let me tell you what, grounding is a great resource. You're barefoot on the ground, or like me with my ROM, R-A-U-M, -R ROM shoes that have a copper rivet. I'm sitting out here so I can ground to help balance my hormones. Why? Because over the last year, since my hormones got whacked, and me fixing to be 57 this year, you know, things just, are, it's that time of time of life where just hormones get whacked, things change. Thanks be to God, God has given me wisdom and what to do in order to make it just the most successful transition in relation to entering a new level of maturing, not only in my members, but also in the faith, amen? Because God can work things that are going on physically with you, he can work it to your good as well. And he can bring such success, prosperity of soul. First John 3, 2, beloved, I pray that you prosper in life and health as you prosper in your soul, amen. And so one of the things that happened over the last year is I had been used to being a size zero and a size two. And I have gained about 16 to 20 pounds and you know, I am do, I'm do keto, now I've added Pilates, and I've done some research, and I just wanna bring this component. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical expert, this is information only. Alpha lipoic acid, alpha lipoic, like lip, O-I-C, lipoic, lip, O-I-C, lipoic acid, because one of the things that happen when estrogen goes down is your blood sugars, and your insulin resistance just goes haywire. And so that's one of the reasons why women gain weight. And I wish I would have known about this earlier. So I could have been taking ALA earlier. And so for me, I take ALA and I have a glucose monitor machine where I monitor my glucose. And it is significant what that alpha lipoic acid does. I take it before a meal, every meal. It recommends one a day. And again, talk to your doctor about it. But for me, I've made the decision for me where I've done my research and I'm taking one before each and every meal. 
And so it helps to balance blood sugars and insulin resistance so that women are able to have carbs, those good carbs, because I'm not a sugar person, those good carbs go into the muscle and not be stored in the fat. And so because it goes into the muscle, it's used as energy for your body. And I have never had so much energy in my entire life. Why? Because for the last several years, if not decades, my alpha lipoic acid has gone down. And the studies and the research, so for women especially that are obese or women especially that have hormonal imbalance, study clinical trials have shown that there is great success in weight loss and just moving into a better healthy space because it brings balance to sugar levels and insulin resistance, it fights it. And so I've just added all these different components. And so in between this space, I've really resisted. God, I do not want to buy a size four. I do not want to buy a size six clothing. Please, God, I do not want to do this. But in this space, y'all, God has taught me, Robin, love yourself in this space. You're doing all you can. You're working hard. You're doing your Pilates classes. You're doing grounding. You're eating keto. You're doing and phenomenal at intermittent fasting. So y'all, I am literally doing all I can. What good is it gonna do if I just beat up on myself, hello, when I am doing the best I can, <laughs> okay? It is like me not loving myself and embracing the season and seeing that it is a space that I can enter and take opportunity to love myself and see myself in a different way. And think about this in relation to you. What circumstances are you going through that instead of loving yourself, like hearing the birds chirp, enjoying the season, and you know, I had to break down and get me some clothing that was a size four and even a size six, and I pray that I am not in it long and I can take them up, hallelujah, through alterations, but it is what it is. But what am I gonna do about it? Am I going to beat myself up? Am I just going to just stomp my, the, my feet on the ground and just get so hot and bothered with myself? That is a waste of time, a waste of energy. It is unfruitful and it is fruitless. Okay. We don't want that. Amen. And so as I coach my different individual clients for different circumstances that they're going in, whatever that might look like, I'm always going to the space of saying, embrace and accept yourself in this season. And acceptance at some times can be a really great friend. When you're going through a season that you really do not want to go through and everything in you is just resisting that season. Saints, you're fighting yourself. You don't love yourself, honestly. And so what can you do? You can enter into that space and say, okay, this is the season I'm in. Accept it. And you know what? Surround yourself with people that are in that same space. Being a psychotherapist, one of the favorite things I loved in my master's degree of social work at the University of Alabama, one of the things I absolutely loved in my first semester was group therapy. And so the group therapy class was even set up not just as a learning component with educational books, textbooks, and all that, but we literally, as social workers, did group therapy in that class. Now, it was that semester, the week before our first midterms, a first semester social work degree, that I became a single mom. I wasn't expecting it, and I was a mother of one and six-year-old boys, and a week before midterms, their father left. And it was a shock to my system. I hated that season. I hated being single. And this was in 1997. And I hated that moment. And I hated that space. And you know what I was doing? I was hating my life. I was hating myself. How many times have you been in the space that you've ever thought, I hate my life? Now, I'm just being real with you because if I'm not real, somebody on here watching this isn't going to be set free. And I know there is someone on here where the enemy has planted the thought in your head, oh, I hate my life. 
and there are seasons that we go through that are hard, that are struggles that are real, but we beat ourselves up when we hate our life in that moment because what we're really saying is that, you know, I hate myself. And so I'll never forget at the end of first semester, group therapy class, we were all sitting in a circle in the group therapy class on the ground. Our desks were pushed to the wall and the teacher, the professor said, let's go around and someone just say something that has really been impressive to you in group therapy. And so this is what blessed me and I was not expecting it. I was just in such a black, bad space. Initially I got on Prozac and I felt like I was just high and I did not like that feeling. And so I got off of that and I ended up for a brief moment getting on some Zoloft for maybe about six months and I finally got off of that, but I needed something that would help me to just get up in the morning and get through the space because that's just honestly where I was. And so one of the people in the class said, I am so impressed with you, Robin Kirby, because you had every opportunity to quit and you hung in there. I am so impressed with you. And I just started bawling. Ooh, this is getting to me. Oh my gosh. I just started bawling because I needed that support. So, group therapy became my favorite thing to do, if you can tell. Group therapy became my favorite thing to do as a psychotherapist. And so, everywhere I went, whether it be aging, whether it be outpatient psychiatry at UAB, and even with the whole nursing staff where 300 plus nurses showed up to something that UAB let crazy Robin Kirby do at the time, when I was single and created group therapy in those spaces. And all the group therapy did was provide a platform for other people in that same space to encourage and to edify and to lift people up. I'll never forget when I did the group therapy session with 300 nurses in an auditorium, 300 plus in an auditorium where you sit on those seats and they're looking down at this platform and I was on the platform and I just opened the floor up after I did my thing and I opened the floor up for these women to encourage one another and they just started crying and running over to each other and encouraging each other and then I brought three women on stage and I said y'all stand on stage and I looked at the other women and I said y'all it is your job to encourage these women to dance and I wish you could have seen all those nurses that attended that day. They were hooping and hollering and clapping and everybody just had this excitement about them. Saints, that is why there is such an all of unity. Psalm 133, when we gather together in fellowship, going through the same different things. And so as I go to my Pilates classes, I love it because there are so many women going through menopause. I'm just being real. And, you know, the younger ladies are there that, that can, you know, we can navigate. Listen, get ahead of the ball game. Don't wait till this knocks you down off your feet. And those women that are on the other side of it, that have gone through that space, they've lost the weight, they've gone through transition, they've embraced it. They all say the same thing to me which I already knew and I've been doing, and they say, love yourself, love yourself. And it's so crazy because two days ago, my father's words from last August were coming to me as I was visiting he and my mother. And he said, Robin, this is what I want for you. He said, I want for you to love you. And those words were resonating in me all day for the last two days and yesterday, <laughs> And, it, and I was just, you know, really embracing and loving myself in the season I'm in, not beating myself up, but loving myself, accepting myself, because I know I'm, I'm accepting the beloved. And as I did that, yesterday, as Rich and I came home, I saw that car tag, 1-L-U-V me. I love me. Saints, that's the gift God wants to give you today. Love yourself. You can only love others. 
You can only encourage others as you love yourself. Saints, hear the birds chirping. Listen, they're praising God. When you love yourself, it's like those birds chirping and your heart sings to the Lord. And guess what? Before you know it, you're on the other side of that transition, of that season, of that circumstance, and you've entered into enlargement and abundance. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day. Praise God, Tina. God bless you all.